Hello everyone, my name is Kimal Onojem and today we will look at the constant velocity model. After completing today's unit, you should be able to define a coordinate system and the position vector. You should be able to calculate the position and the displacement vector of an object with respect to a given coordinate system. You should be able to discuss in depth what we mean by average velocity, average speed, instantaneous velocity, and most importantly, you should be able to describe motion verbally, graphically, and mathematically. In other words, you should be able to articulate or use verbal description graphical analysis and mathematical representation to describe the motion of a system. What you need to bear in mind is that AP Mechanics C essentially studies Newtonian mechanics. Now Newtonian mechanics can be divided into three sections. You have kinematics, you have dynamics, and you have statics. Kinematics, on the one hand, kinematics is the description of motion, both quantitatively and qualitatively. Now, what you need to bear in mind is that in kinematics, we do not bother about the causes of motion. When we talk about describing motion quantitatively and qualitatively, we mean we should be able to describe motion verbally, mathematically, And graphically but what is motion when is an object said to be in motion but what is motion motion is a term use used to describe an object whose position changes in short motion is used when the position of an object changes with time. But then, when we talk about position, what do we mean? In order to define the position of an object, we need what we call a coordinate system. We need what we call a coordinate system. Every coordinate system has three important things. One, it has a reference point. Two, it has a set of perpendicular axes. And the three, it has a sense of direction. In this course, we will use what we call the Cartesian coordinate system in which we have the Y, the X and the Z. This is the Y axis, the X and the Z. And these three axes are essentially at right angles to each other and this is our origin but this topic today we are going to limit ourselves to one dimensional motion so let's talk about position and the displacement if we have our coordinate axis this is our x-axis 
and initially Johnny is at a position XI and he moves to another position XF this is John's initial position and this is John's final position. You realize that the position changes because John moves. The change in position is called displacement. So the displacement of John delta x is equal to x final minus x initial. Is equal to x final minus x initial. Now what you need to bear in mind is that the SI unit of position is the meter. Keep also in mind that the displacement of an object delta x which is equal to xf minus xi strictly depends only on the initial position sorry the final position under the initial position It does not depend on the path between the initial position and the final position. Now, displacement does not depend on the path between the initial position and the final position now on the other hand distance is simply the magnitude of displacement and which implies that the distance travel is always greater than or equal to the displacement between two points. which implies that the distance travel is always greater than or equal to the displacement between the two points. Velocity or otherwise average velocity is defined as displacement divided by time taken. In other words, V average is equal to delta X divided by delta T, which is equal to XF minus XI all divided by TF minus TI. 
the dimensions of V is equal to the dimensions of delta X divided by the dimensions of T which is going to be equal to L over capital T or LT minus 1. What this means is that the unit of V is meters per second. Is meters per second. Velocity is a vector meaning it has both a magnitude and a direction. Speed, on the other hand, is equal to the distance travel divided by the time taken. Divided by the time taken. So the speed S is equal to D over T. The SI unit of speed is the meters per second. Is the meters per second. Let's look at an example here. The figure above shows a car and a truck moving towards each other at constant speeds. The movement, the moment, sorry, the moment the driver in the car notices the truck ahead, they are a distance d meters apart. The car has a constant velocity Vc to the right, while the truck in the opposite lane has a constant velocity Vt to the left. Suppose they maintain this speed, how far from where the car first saw the truck do the truck and the car pass each other? Now the first things first, let's say that the distance travel by the car before they bypass each other is x then the distance moved by the truck will be d minus x we know that speed is defined as distance over time which means that distance is equal to speed multiplied by distance so the speed, the distance traveled by the car is x, it's equal to vc multiplied by t. The distance traveled by the truck is d minus x, which is going to be equal to vt all multiplied by t. What you need to bear in mind is that the time taken by the car is equal to the time taken by the truck. Therefore, we have T equal to X over VC, which implies that D minus X is equal to VT, all multiplied by X over VC. Recall that d minus x is equal to vt multiplied by x over vc so we need to solve for x hence d will be equal to vt over vc all multiplied by x plus x which means that x bracket 1 plus vt over vc is equal to d in which case x is equal to d 
divided by 1 plus VT divided by VC. If you further simplify, this will give you VC divided by VC plus VT all multiplied by D. So X will be equal to VC, VC plus VT all multiplied by D. This is the value for X. Now, an example to distinguish between speed and velocity. Suppose you have journey He moves with a certain speed V1 from point A to point B. At B, he moves back with a certain speed V2 back to point A. Let's say that the distance between A and B is D. The question is, what is the average speed and average velocity. Average speed V average is equal to displacement is given by the displacement divided by time which is gonna be d minus d divided by t final minus t initial and all of this is equal to zero so this means that v average in this case is zero the fact that the average speed is zero, does this mean that, sorry, the fact that the average acceleration is zero, does this mean that the average speed is zero? Understand that unlike velocity, which is a vector quantity, speed is a scalar quantity. Now the speed of an object is defined as the total distance travel, the total distance travel divided by time taken which means that the speed s is d plus d divided by t1 plus t2 v1 is equal to d over t1 which means that t1 is equal to d over v1 similarly t2 will be equal to d over v2 this would mean that the speed s will be equal to 2d divided by d over v1 plus d over v2 which will be equal to the D's can take care of themselves, so we are going to have 2 V1 V2 all divided by V1 plus V2. So this is our average speed, which is not equal to zero. One thing you need to bear in mind is that speed is a scalar quantity and therefore can never be negative. It can be zero or positive. On the other hand, velocity is a vector quantity and therefore can be negative, positive, or zero. Now we are going to talk about the vector nature of velocity next. First things first, 
velocity is a vector meaning that it can it has a size and a direction meaning that it has a size and a direction what does this imply it means that the velocity of an object can be greater than zero it means that the velocity of an object can be equal to zero or the velocity can be less than zero so the question I have for you is what does the sign of velocity mean in other words when the velocity of an object is positive what does that mean when the velocity of an object is zero what does that mean and when the velocity of an object is negative what does that mean now we know that average velocity is basically defined as delta x divided by delta t we also know that time is always greater than zero what this implies is that the sign or the sign of v is equal to the sign of delta x and this is the displacement And this is the displacement so the direction of V or the velocity is the direction of Delta X always remember this the direction of V is the direction of Delta X okay <clears throat> look at this carefully this is Peter and this is Paul Here x is greater than 0 and here x is less than 0. In other words, a positive position implies that you are to the right of the origin and a negative position implies that you are to the left of the origin. So if x is greater than 0 implies object is on okay great so if the velocity is positive then delta x is positive which means that x final is greater than x initial in other words a positive velocity implies increasing position on the other hand what does a negative velocity mean if v is less than zero then the change or the displacement will also be less than zero which would mean that x final is less than x initial in other words a negative velocity implies 
a decreasing position. A negative velocity implies a decreasing position and a positive velocity implies an increasing position. Now observe this carefully. We have four quadrant. This is the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. In this quadrant, x is greater than zero. In this quadrant, x is greater than zero. In this quadrant, x is less than zero. And in this quadrant, x is less than zero. Let's consider four scenarios. If we have our journey moving in this direction from an initial position x initial to a final position x final and we have our journey this is x initial this is x final moving in this direction this is v in both scenario one and scenario two the position is increasing. For example, for example, this could be negative 4 and this could be negative 2. This could be 2 and this could be 4. So we have negative 2, negative, negative 4. This is positive 2. What this means is that v is greater than 0. Here, 4 minus 2 is 2. What this means is that v is greater than 0. Now, on the other hand, if we have an object moving in this direction, this is v, you realize that the position is decreasing. What this means is that V is less than zero. Similarly, if we have an object moving in this direction, you realize that the position is decreasing, so V is less than zero. Now observe something. In, in this quadrant, The object is moving away from the origin and here the position is positive and the velocity is positive. Let's come back here. The object is moving away from the origin. The position is negative and the velocity is negative. So what can we conclude? When the position and velocity are of the same sign, the object moves away from the reference point. Let me say that again. When the position and velocity are of the same sign, the object moves away from the reference point. Now, let's come back here again. The object moves towards the reference point, in this case, and the object moves towards the reference point in this case. Let's go back to scenario one. In the first case, in the first case, you also realize that the position is negative and the velocity is positive. In the second case, the position is positive and the velocity is negative. So what does this mean? When the position and velocity are of opposite sign, the object moves towards the reference point. Let's jot this down. Now, this is critical. If x and v are of the same sign, 
then object moves away from the origin or reference point I prefer reference point this is one two if X and V are of opposite signs then object moves towards the reference point these are two critical statements that you need to always remember how do we describe motion graphically when you look at every graph Two important things can be deduced from the graph. One, the slope of the graph. Two, the area under the graph. Well, three, the intercept. So if we have generally, this is our x-axis, this is our y, and we have a graph like this, this is y naught. this line is a straight line and is given by y equal to y naught plus mx. This is what we call the y-intercept. This is the slope, and x is the independent variable. The slope of the graph is defined as the change of the quantity in the y-axis divided by the change in the quantity in the x-axis. Now, when you want to analyze a motion graph, you need to look at what the slope of the graph represents what the area under the graph represents and you also have to pay close attention to the various intercepts so the question is how do we know what the slope of a graph represents how do we know what the area under a graph represents take for example we have Let's consider the position versus time graph. We have here x and we have here t. Let's just say we have a graph like that. The slope of this straight line is the change of the quantity in the y-axis which is x over the change of the quantity in the x-axis which is t now some of you may be wondering why i have decided to place t on the x-axis the reason is because when it comes to motion the only independent variable is time and this explains why time is always placed on the x-axis. Let, let me be very clear. In all motion graphs, time is always placed on the x-axis. Every other variable is a function of time and therefore should be placed on the y-axis. So to determine the meaning of the slope, all we have to do is look for the units of the slope. In other words, the dimensions of the slope is the dimensions of x divided by the dimensions of t which is l over t or which is l t minus 1 hence the slope is measured in meters per second in other words the slope of the position versus time graph is equal 
to velocity most specifically if this graph is a straight line it is equal to average velocity it is equal to average velocity now the homework i have for you will be to find out what the area under a position versus time graph represents to find out what the area under a position versus time graph represents let us analyze a couple of graphs here if we have this is time this is position this is x naught what does this graph represent one remember when you are given a graph look at the slope and ask yourself the question what does the slope of the graph represent now to determine the meaning of the slope look for the divide the unit of the quantity in the x-axis sorry in the y-axis by the units of the quantity in the t-axis or in the in the, in the x-axis in that case you will get the slope now here the slope of a position versus time graph stands for velocity the slope in this case the slope of this graph is zero which means that the velocity of the object is zero hence this graph represents listen to my words carefully represents an object at rest a distance x naught from the origin It represents an object address, a distance x naught from the origin. Let's look at another example. This is t, this is x. In this case, we have a straight line. You realize that one, the slope is constant, but positive this means that the velocity is constant and the positive therefore this graph represents the motion of an object moving moving to the right with a constant velocity with a constant velocity let's look at another scenario again we have this is t this is x and we have a graph like this notice that the slope is less than zero but constant also notice that the position x is greater than zero if the position and velocity are of opposite sign what does that mean? It means that the object is moving towards the origin. So this graph represents the motion of a system that starts moving from a position X and moves towards the origin with a constant velocity. With a constant velocity. Um, so let's, start, let's, let's analyze a more detailed scenario. We have t in seconds and we have x in meters. We have a graph like this. This is 2, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, this scale here is not really right. But anyway, when you are given a graph like this, break it up into sections. This is A, 
this is B and this is C. The slope of A is greater than zero but constant. The slope of B is equal to zero and the slope of C is less than zero and the constant. What does this mean? Understand that throughout the motion, the position is positive. So in region A, the position is positive, the velocity is positive and constant. What this means is that the object begins from rest at the origin and moves with a constant velocity away from the origin and to the right for one second remains at rest for the next two seconds and then moves back towards the origin with a constant speed and then stops at the origin. Thank you for your time. Our next video will illustrate more examples on graphical analysis as well as verbal descriptions and mathematical representation for a system moving with a constant velocity. It is always a pleasure for me to do these short educational videos for your enrichment. Thank you for watching and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remain blessed. This is Kimal Honor Jam.